In this lesson, lesson number two, we will begin the process of learning and understanding some of the basic techniques that can be used for lighting, as well as the different types of effects and physics behind lighting that are used in machine vision. A quick note about lighting and machine vision. No matter what people may say, the reality is that in order to build a reliable and solid vision application, you must start with solid key lighting of the features you wish to see in an object or a part. There is no amount of vision processing power in any device that can compensate for poor lighting or changing lighting conditions. It's critical to make sure that the lighting conditions are that they best highlight the features you're looking to see, as well as that they do not change or have the ability to be changed by external forces. Lighting and filters are always something that can be used to manipulate, contrast, and create a better way of seeing for the camera of any particular feature that is on a part. And remember, just because you can see a feature or you can see what it is you're trying to see on the surface of a part with, say, standard room lighting, does not mean that it's good enough lighting for the camera to be able to use tools to examine whatever it is in the part you're looking for. So again, lighting is key and lighting always takes experimentation. It's important to know that no given lighting technique will always be the correct solution just because you see it that way. It's important to test it on the camera and be sure. Let's start by looking at the spectral efficiency curve. This curve represents the spectral illuminescence or visibility of a given color along its wavelength. To the left is the ultraviolet light or dark blue light as it's sometimes referred to. And on the right is the red or infrared end of the spectrum. You'll notice that the green to yellow shift in color light is where you have the highest illuminescence efficiency. As you move to the right, you will move to the right to the red, infrared, end of the wavelength. This area is where there is also a high degree of efficiency in detection amongst CMOS, CMOS elements in the camera for creating the image. This area is where you will typically see most of your lighting contained within a vision application. It is also the least disturbing to the human eye, especially in the infrared spectrum, when being used around people. When using a white light source, white light source will take into account this entire end of the spectral curve from the ultraviolet all the way down to the infrared, or all the way up to the infrared. White light tends to produce such a broad spectrum that it can also produce inefficiencies in the image by showing areas in the image you do not wish to see. So it's important to pick the color that best illuminates the area and the color that you're trying to see. Next, let's look at light color reflectivity. Through the use of manipulating the color of a light source against the color of an object or part, we can take advantage of reflecting specific wavelengths of light back to the camera. This technique allows us to better highlight or feature a contrast in a known feature of the part we're trying to see. In this example, we're just using a white light source with a red, green, and blue component reflecting off of colored objects to reflect a specific color wavelength of light back to the CMOS imager in the camera. As you can see, starting on the right side with the red object, by pointing a white light source, the red is best reflected off of the object, while the green and the blue are absorbed by the color of the object and not reflected back. This means that any red feature on the part will be readily reflected back with greater contrast to the imager. And then moving to the right side, where the blue object is, the blue component is also then reflected back best to the imager in the camera, thus creating greater contrast with this. This shows that by manipulating the color of the light source against the color of an object, we can take advantage of the contrasting of that part to see specific areas we wish to see with that color. A specialized technique that can be used to help cut down on stray reflectivity in an image off of an object or a part is known as polarization. 
Polarization is a usually a special screw type lens that's used on the front of the given lens you have on a camera to be able to isolate stray wavelengths of light coming from an object creating a hot spot or a bright aspect to the image. This is done by manipulating a horizontal and vertical filter in a way where light that's coming from stray wavelengths, typically from a multiple light source like RGB or white light source, can be isolated down to a specific wavelengths that pass through into the camera's imager. This can help cut down on that reflectivity coming from a particular aspect of the part that creates such a bright spot or hot spot in the image that it distracts from the other aspects of the image, causing us to have to turn down the lighting of a camera. By the use of the manipulation of turning the two filters, either vertical or horizontal, we can cut down on that hot spot or bright spot returning of light. Now let's discuss the basic lighting techniques that can be used to light an object or a part. We'll start with background lighting, sometimes or most commonly known as backlighting. Then we'll discuss strip lighting, or also known as bar lighting, a coaxial lighting source, a dark field lighting source, a ring lighting source, a spotlight, and finally line lasing or line lasers as a light source. Let's start by looking at background lighting or backlighting. This is a technique where a light source is placed behind the part or the object or under the part or object to produce a high degree of contrast of the edges of the parts. This technique can be used to manipulate the edges of the part or, for example, through hole features in the part to be able to produce sharp edges. That contrast in the sharp edges of the part can then be used specifically for things like dimensioning with a high degree of accuracy and repeatability. Strip lighting, or as I'd mentioned, sometimes known as bar lighting, is where two large bars or small bars of LED lights can be used or placed and manipulated in their direction at a given object to specifically highlight a feature on that object. This can be used in many ways to both highlight features as well as produce shadows or highlight surfaces of an object by simply moving and placing those bar lights in a given angle. Depending on the angularity of the part itself, bar lights can also be used to help specifically illuminate a surface you're looking at that may be at an angle to the camera. Coaxial lighting is a unique lighting technique one of several that can be used to specifically manipulate the direction of the light source in relationship to its return angle into the camera's lens. Through this technique of coaxial lighting, there is a mirror placed inside of the coaxial light source. The light is then reflected at a 90 degree angle down directly in the same line, axial line to the part as the axis of the camera. This means that the light is reflected directly back into the camera, which is then seeing through the back side of that half mirror toward the object. This helps to create a very smooth and flattened surface on the surface of the object you're looking at. It also helps to reduce significant reflections or sometimes foil reflections from an inconsistent foil surface. It's very good for views being used to check for date codes or printing on the surface of a reflective bag, for example, like that used in electronic components, as well as helping to dramatically reduce the high reflectivity of certain shiny surfaces or polished surfaces. A dark field light source, typically what looks like a very highly flattened ring light, is typically used in a manner to be able to reflect the light against the surface of an object at such an angle that it makes it very easy to detect surface flaws or surface features of an object. Through this use of high angle lighting, it is easy to be able to check for scratches or imperfections on the surface of an object, as the light then reflects off of that imperfection directly into the camera, highlighting or contrasting that imperfection very easily. But be careful. 
One of the difficulties of using this light source is that it must be located very, very close to the surface of an object. Sometimes this light source can be difficult or impossible to use because the surface we are trying to examine is hindered by other surfaces higher, thus not allowing us to get the light source close enough to the surface of the object. So use this light with caution and be prepared to have to manipulate this technique to be able to see what you're looking for on the object. Ring lighting is a very common technique that's used to produce a very good general all-around lighting source. This light source can be used to light up different aspects of the or all aspects of a part for both its surface areas as well as its external features. But be careful, this light source can also make it more difficult to see specific features within a known object. The great thing about this light source is with the high density of LEDs, it produces a great deal of illumination and therefore can work very well for a long projection source when the light needs to be located further away from the part. Spotlighting is a technique where you use a very narrow or tight spot beam of light coming from a specific type of light source that can be used to project against a specific area of a known part. This technique can be very handy, especially on larger parts, for being able to highlight a very specific feature of that part. This aspect of lighting can also be used in combination with other lights to produce a greater contrast in a specific area of a part while still producing general lighting in other aspects of the part. Spotlighting can be used in combination with other spotlights to specifically highlight multiple features on a part in a single application. Line laser lighting can be used to take advantage of the linear light source produced by a laser. This is typically going to be in the red spectrum. This type of laser lighting can be used to specifically project a pattern against the surface of an object. In this case, we're showing a crosshatch pattern. This can be used specifically to illuminate areas of the part to be able to produce highly sharp contrasted areas specifically at edges of the object. It can also be used to detect a variation in the height of an object. This technique is very specialized and can be manipulated in many ways. Again, experimentation is key with this type of light source, but results can be very surprising. This completes this lesson for basic lighting. Keep in mind with lighting, there is no amount of vision power in a given camera that can compensate for poor lighting. Image and contrast are the key to stability in every application. So make sure you take the time to experiment and get your lighting for the best contrast of the parts and features you wish to see before exposing it to the camera and trying to make your measurements. You will find greater reliability and stability when you put the time into getting a good lit surface.